Hi, and welcome to another look at Angui 3.6. In a previous video, I talked about the prefab toolbar that was added, and I've also explained how to use it. Since then, I've actually added uh, tabs to it, so you can actually organize your content a little bit better. And I've also simplified the way you specify the snapshots position. Now to position your snapshot, all you have to do is create a child game object underneath the prefab and attach the snapshot point script to it. I mean, you can still go through the naming stuff that I explained in a previous video, but here it's quite a bit easier. For example, if I wanted to change the snapshot, I would just click the update snapshot button and it'll be reflected right here. So here, if I reset the position and revert the value to something else, click the update snapshot and you will see that it gets updated automatically. I don't have to do anything else. Just don't forget to hit the apply button to apply the changes to the prefab afterwards. Since this object is actually marked as editor only, it will only exist in the editor, so you will not be creating any additional overhead for your runtime application. In any case, in this video, I want to talk about how you can create your user interface without using the Angui's Atlas Maker or Font Maker at all. I will show you how you can use Unity 4.3's 2D sprite system instead, as it was recently updated for Unity 4.5 and it cannot be scripted quite a bit easier. Just a quick note, for the purpose of this tutorial, I am actually using Unity 4.5, although most of this will work just fine in Unity 4.3 as well. The user interface you see before you was created using Angui, but it doesn't use any of Angui's sprites or fonts. For the text, I'm simply making use of the dynamic font system. And for the sprites, I'm just using the 2D sprites, which is a feature in Unity 4.3. To add a 2D sprite to the scene, you would just go through the regular uh, Create menu right here, through the Ngui menu right here, or using the Alt-Shift-D shortcut. Here I can actually choose which sprite I want, for example this one, and at this point it can be used just like any Angui widget. I can uh, bring it forward, I can adjust where it is, well, you know the drill. Now the advantage of relying on Unity's functionality here is quite obvious. I don't have to create my atlas beforehand, I don't have to go through here at all. All I have to do is just select the texture that I want, import it as a 2D sprite, and just start using it. If I want it to end up in an atlas, I specify the packing tag, same as with any other 2D sprite, and that's it. When I hit the play button or do a build, the atlas will be created for me by Unity. I don't have to do any extra work. The disadvantage of this approach is that the number of draw calls is likely going to be a little bit higher than a similar interface created using Angui's atlases and bitmap fonts. But if you are smart about it, then you can reduce the number of draw calls by using the tools that Angui provides for you, like the draw call tool, for example. And you will reduce your draw calls to the point where it's almost equal to what you would get with the native Angui's functionality. Can you guess how many draw calls are needed to draw this user interface here? You may think 10, because that's also what you saw in a draw call tool, but that's not entirely accurate, because the atlas that Unity generates for you gets created when you hit play. So when you hit play, the number goes down drastically. Only three draw calls are necessary to draw this user interface here. Just make sure to turn on the atlas generation to begin with by going edit, Project Settings, Editor, and choosing it right here, Sprite Packer. The final generated Atlas texture can be examined by going to Window, Sprite Packer. The only annoying thing about the whole process is that you have to make sure that the textures that you're going to be using are using the same exact import settings, or they will end up in different Atlases. Here, for example, this is one Atlas texture, but there's also a second one right underneath it that is using a different texture format, RGB 24-bit, while 
This one is using ARGB 32-bit. Different texture formats for the source textures mean that different atlas textures are going to be created, which means that batching is not going to be nearly as effective. Fortunately, it is fairly easy to debug and to force it to go into a proper texture. Here, I've got a small stripes texture that is in the wrong atlas. It is using RGB 24-bit instead of ARGB. I want it to be a part of the greater atlas instead. Now, to fix this, I need to find the texture right here and then change the format to match all the other textures. You might think that the format is the same. See how it's true color here? And the true color here as well. But if you look down here, you can see that this texture is ARGB 32 bit, while this one is RGB 32 bit. The difference is that one texture has alpha and the other one does not. So they actually end up in different atlases. You can force this by changing the format of this texture instead of being true color to be something else. Of course, for that, you need to uh, go to advanced mode instead and choosing it down here. ARGB 16-bit, ARGB 32-bit. This is what I'm looking for. Now if I hit apply and then hit play, you will see that it ends up in the proper atlas. You can examine it once again by going to window, sprite packer, and looking for it here. It's no longer going to be in this group because it's now in here. If at any point you find yourself stuck with too many draw calls, just use the draw call tool to find out why. Only make sure to do it in play mode, not at edit mode, so everything gets batched correctly. Generally, if you see a draw call with only a single widget, then it's a sign that something might be wrong. In this case, it isn't, because it's just the topmost label inside the scroll view. But it's still a good thing to uh, keep an eye on this. If you like the look of this UI, you can actually find it for sale on the asset store for 20 bucks. It's by a publisher that goes by the name of Evil. Which reminds me, if you are an asset store publisher who has created something cool using Nguya and want me to talk about it in one of my videos, or just show it around, feel free to drop me a line. I can't promise that I'll do it, but I'll definitely have a look. Oh, and uh, the text I used here is actually from an extremely well written and hilarious book called The Martian by Andy Weir. It is soon going to be turned into a blockbuster movie, as a matter of fact, starring Matt Damon, according to Wikipedia. It's basically about a guy who gets stranded on Mars, and he has to survive for over a year. And he's like this mechanical genius who keeps creating things and patching things up, and he has an extremely awesome sense of humor that makes the book amazing. But don't take my word for it, just wait for the movie if you're not a reader. But if you are, pick up this book, you're not gonna regret it. Especially if you're a fan of a Kerbal Space Program like myself. Anyhow, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll enjoy using these features. Later!